All right, here we go now. Welcome everybody. Lee Lowell here from smartoptionseller.com. Today is Saturday, January 15, 2022. Welcome to another edition of our Saturday Synopsis. What do we do? We look at the charts. That's what we do. We look at indexes. We look at individual stocks. I'm here to show you what I do and what I see on the charts. I'm a technical analyst. I study the charts. That's what I've been doing for the last 30 years. So I'm here to make these videos, these YouTube videos to try to help you understand what I'm seeing and how I could help you become a better technical analyst. It helps to have an idea of when to get in and when to get out of trades. I get lots of people emailing me Ask me, Lee, how do I know when it's time to get into a trade? How do I know if I'm going to buy a stock? What's the right price? How do I know if it's over, over, overpriced, underpriced? I just don't know when to get into a stock. Now, in addition to fundamental analysis, which is, which is what you can do to look at the underlying fundamentals of a company, meaning what are their sales? What are their earnings? What's their PE ratios? You know, what, how are their, what are their projected revenues? Those are all the numbers that you can look at a company to see how they've been performing over time. But all those numbers are certainly a good thing, but it doesn't tell you when, when you should get into a trade or when a stock may be overbought or oversold or underpriced or overpriced. So for me, it's all about looking at the charts because all of that underlying data gets reflected into a price chart. Everybody that trades stocks ha has the same information that everybody else does. You know, unless you're an insider and, and you're getting some inside information, but we all know that's illegal. So we don't even talk about that. But everyone else that trades in the market has access to the same information. And all those numbers, all those sales, earnings, revenue, PE ratios, whatever, all gets reflected on the chart. And the market will tell you when a stock is overbought or oversold or when it's the right time to get into a trade. That's why I focus on technical analysis. That's why my main thing is 99% of the time, technical analysis is, is when I make a decision to get into or, or out of a trade. All right. So I'm here to help you. I'm here to show you what I do, what I see, and what I look for on the charts. Okay, and it's all about technical analysis, and I'm going to show you what we use or what I use as my indicators. Now, whenever you look at a chart, you can look at a plain price chart. And price is just the price action is, you know, how has the stock been moving over time? Has it been going up? Has it been going down? And to help you along the way, to help you figure out, you know, where's the momentum or how, if a stock has momentum or is it very choppy or is it moving in one direction, you can use moving averages and other types of technical technical indicators. Look at support and resistance levels. Where's the stock having trouble breaking through or where's the stock having trouble, you know, not falling below? Where's the support? Where's the resistance? So all these things you can look at on a chart to help you gauge whether it's time to get in or out of a position. Now, what you see here on the chart, I keep it very simple and very old school. I don't use a lot of a lot of indicators. What you see on the chart in front of you is 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 a bar chart, daily bar chart. And which means every one of these vertical lines you see here is one day's worth of trading. And the top of the bar is the high of the day. The low of the bar or the bottom of the bar is the low price of stock traded for that day. And and over time, it forms a pattern or it forms, you know, it, it has a direction. Now, what you're seeing on the chart here is what we look at uh, for the overall broadest view of the market. And what we're seeing is the SPY, which is the exchange traded front for the S&P 500 index. The S&P 500 index to me is the broadest measure of the market as a whole. So I like to concentrate on that. And the SPY is, is, a, is a tradable fund, trades just like a stock. So it gives us an easy way to get get long or short the market, whatever, whatever you feel. And, and, and it's a great, it's a great um, vehicle to, to trade in. Now for me, I have a long-term approach. Now, I'm bullish on the on the stock market for the long term, years and years and years. So to make it easy for me, all I do is when I want to invest in the market as a whole, I just buy shares of the SPY or I buy long-term deep in the money call options, which is a subject for another day. But what I but what I like to do is I try to buy uh, the SPY on pullbacks whenever it has a you know a, a decent pullback. I buy a few shares. Here and there, just do that month after month, and just I, I create this this long term position for my account. Now, I also get people that that email me each week saying, you know, Lee, I you know 
I want to trade this thing. I want to get it in and out. I want to become a trader. So there's, there's a lot of people that, that tell me what, what happens to their trades is that a lot of these people that, you know, they want to make money fast. So they're, they're trying to trade very short term with options. They try to buy very short term call options and, and, and those have a high rate of failure, you know, trading like that. It's a hard gig. It's very hard to do. If you're trading short term options, you got to be really good at picking the direction of the stock because if the stock doesn't move in that short time frame, those options that you bought are going to expire and you're going to lose your money. I'm sure a lot of people out there have tried it. That's not my game. I'm in for the long haul. And when I do trade for our newsletters, our, our time frame is roughly one to three months, but we're trading out of the money options. That gives us a lot of cushion for directional error. That's what we like to do. We like to sell options because it gives us an opportunity to still make money even if the stock moves in the wrong direction, all right? You really can't do that. If you're buying stocks, there's only one way to be right, and that's the stock has to go up. Or if you're shorting stocks, there's only one way to be right, and the stock has to go down. If it moves in the opposite direction, you're toast. So we like to sell options. We like to sell out-of-the-money options. That gives us a lot of cushion for directional error because we all know we're not going to get the direction right all the time. So you might as well play and put the odds in your favor by, by selling out of the money options because it gives you a lot of cushion for error. And that's how we do it. Do it. That's how we do it. All right. So let's take a look at the market, see what's, what's going on and give an idea of, you know, where it might be heading next. And on the charts, I have my, my three normal moving averages. I have a 20 day, 50 day and 200 day moving average. Those are up here on, uh, on the price action down here. I have the 14 day RSI overbought, oversold indicator. I got the 80 level, 20 level is my levels, my overbought, oversold levels. And down here I have the stochastics, which I've recently added, just trying to see if it could help me time my trades a little bit better. I don't know if I'm gonna use it long-term. I'm giving it some time to see if it can help me. But anyway, this is the stochastics down here. The, the numbers are 12, 26, and nine, because when you pull up the stochastics, you have to put in some levels. 12, 26, 9, and on the RSI, it's a 14-day RSI. All right, so let's take a look at the market, see what's happening here. Obviously, now I have these, these markings on the charts that, I, that I've kept for a long time. You know what? I'm going to take these off now so we can kind of look at uh, uh, more of the, the price action without all this mumble jumble on here. And, you know, I've had these lines in here for a very long time. And for some of you that have been with us for a while, you know you've seen these these patterns here so i'm going to get rid of a lot of this stuff we can start from a nice clean chart you can see this w pattern which is a bullish pattern obviously the market went up at that point all right so i'm just removing all this all right so now we have a nice clean chart and you can see just the the beautiful momentum the upwards momentum the stock markets had since the pandemic i'm gonna pull back a little bit here so here's february march 2020 had the V-shaped recovery, and the market's just gone up since, right? If you've been in the market long-term bullish, you've had a hell of a run. Now, if you're trying to trade this thing short-term, you may have been whipped out back and forth, back and forth. So, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to tell you, if you're trading short-term options, it's a, it's a tough gig. Um, so where's the market headed? Well, obviously, you can see it's going up, but a lot of people get caught in these these little, these little pullbacks right here, this one to two week pullbacks, people get nervous and they sell out of their positions and they get frustrated because the market has a little bit of pullback for a couple days. But if you think about it, the stock market's at all time highs. We're going to pull out to the monthly here. All right. So you can see the S&P 500 all time highs uh, just this month alone. So back here on this was so first couple trading days of January, hitting all time new highs. Let me open this up a little so you can see it better right here. So this was on January, January 4th, right here. Okay, all time new highs. So if you, look in, if you look back, the market's been great and we're trading at all time new highs, but it's these little, it's these little tiny pullbacks that get people all crazed. They think that this is the start of the next bear market and they, they bought their call options up here on the tops and, and the short-term call options that they bought. A couple days later, those things expire and people are losing money, so they get very frustrated. You know, that's not how I like to play. That's not how we play it in our newsletters. We're just going along with the momentum and we're looking to buy or we're looking to get into our long positions 
Uh, those are selling put options and selling put option credit spreads. Those are bullish positions. So we look for the pullbacks and then we enter our trades. Well, how do we know the market's on a pullback? Well, that's when we start to draw our trend lines. Okay, so I'm going to just start drawing some new lines here. And I won't go all the way back. But so you kind of connect the bottoms of some recent um, moves here. So here's your here's your little uptrend on the bottom of the channel. And, I, and I'll just connect some of these lines up here. OK, it doesn't have to be exact. And what I put on the chart might be something different than somebody else might put on the chart. But right now you can see that the S&P 500 or the general market is sort of now in this little uptrend for the last three or four months or so. So if the market goes along with with the pattern that it's been and, you know, I, I say this a lot. An object in motion will tend to stay in that same motion until something comes along and knocks it in another direction. And stocks trade the same way. They trade with momentum. They're going to keep going in that same direction until it something pushes it in another direction. Now that push could be, you know, a one or two week down move, or it could be, you know, something like the pandemic where it pushed it really far down. Okay. So, but for now, we're in this nice little channel here. So you can see when it connects to the bottom leg of the channel, it will tend to go up. It's not guaranteed. There's no guarantees in trading, but you want to pick higher probability entries. Okay. So here is a more higher probability entry or anytime that the, the, the market, the price action has come down to the channel. Okay. Or, or on other times you can see the price action bounces every time it hits the 50 day or the 20 day moving edge. Here's the 20 day, the blue line, 50 days, the red line. So if you're trying to trying to gauge your, your timing, you can gauge it off of the moving averages, or you can draw yourself some channels like this. Now, what I've been doing is I nibble. And when I say I nibble, I buy a few shares here, here and there of the SPY, just keep building my long-term portfolio, but I buy in dips. Okay. I buy in these dips down here. Today, I bought some more of the SPY right around 460, right around 460. I bought some and the market closed at 460, 472. I'm not scalping. I'm not selling these things out. These are things that I'm holding for the long haul. And all along the way on the little down moves, I buy a little more, buy a little more. So I built, keep building this position. And, you know, if last one of the times I bought here, well, look where it is now. So you, you want to use these little pullbacks as your gauge. Now, if, you're, if you want to short the market or sell the market, you could try to sell it when it hits along the top leg here. But you got to be fast because the market is meant to go up over time. So if you're short and you sell, you, you better take profits pretty quickly or else they're going to evaporate and because the market's just going to keep going up over time. So what we do in the Smart Option Seller, we look at the charts, we try to try to we try to time these these entries here when it when it looks like it may be bouncing off the bottom leg here that's when we enter a naked put sell or a put option credit spread which is also bullish strategy so that's what we do and, and that's as simple as that now the rsi is you know right in the middle of the range it's not overbought not oversold so that just tells me the market is content and it's just moving up nicely along it's nice momentum stochastics here you know not not telling me all that much um, if anything, it may be getting a little on the overbought side, but the RSI is not telling me that. And the price action tell me it probably could bounce here. So I'm not convinced that this stochastics is, is, is helping me enough. So I'm not sure if I'm paying, if I'm going to pay a lot of attention to that. But anyway, so for me, uh, once again, I nibbled here the other day, I nibbled down here a couple of weeks ago, I nibbled down here. And that's just how you can build a long-term position if that's what you want. I'm not telling you what to do. This is not, a, I'm not giving you any recommendations. This is not personal investment advice. This is just me telling you what I've been doing. Okay, so there's the, the S&P 500. And I think it's going to keep going up over time. That's just how the market works. Sure, there the narrative out there is in, inflation's creeping up or it's been creeping up. It's been very high, actually. You know, things cost more money these days, everything that you buy. That's just what's happening out there. The, the U.S. Federal Reserve is going to start raising interest rates to help fight off this inflation. And typically stocks can sell off. 
uh, when interest rates rise, but we know interest rates are not going to rise dramatically. They come in little baby steps, not enough for you to pull your money out of the stock market and start investing in long-term you know, U.S. Treasury bonds. Those still don't pay you hardly anything. Was it going to give you 2%, 3%? Whereas in the stock market, the long-term average is somewhere between 7 and 10%. If you look at the S&P 500 over the last couple of years, it's been returning 20, 27, 28%. It's been crazy. So the stock market is still your best bet for long-term, um, long-term wealth. So if the, if the Fed starts to raise interest rates, you're not going to see this gigantic sell-off because people are and people know better. People are smarter than that. So the, the stock market is meant to go up over time. It's just the short-term speculations that people have where they where they you know they swear off the market forever. They're never going to play again because they try to make money quick and they get whipsawed out. It's just a hard, it's just too hard of a way to make money. Okay. So I'm in it for the long haul for our newsletters. We're in one to three months at a time, and we sell out of the money options because it gives us more directional uh, cushion for error. All right, so let's take a look at the NASDAQ represented by the, the QQQ, and the, the the tech stocks have been having a little bit harder time of late. Now, you can see I've marked this up pretty good as well. You've got this long-term uptrend, which has been very nice as well. If you had some pullbacks here, it's been sideways here. So let me open this up a little bit. So I probably drew this this little channel very recently. So it's been bouncing in between this little channel. Fell through it a little bit uh, this week, popped back up. And then you can see here to yesterday on Friday, it closed. Here's a little dash mark on the right side of the bars where it closed today. So it closed above the the bottom leg of the support here. So maybe next week, then if things are if the news is not that bad, maybe the Nasdaq will 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 pop here and head back up. Now, if you're if you're looking to get long, you're looking for higher probability trades. This is where you might want to nibble a little bit. Okay, not saying to bet the farm, bet don't bet the house, but you know, there's a good possibility that the NASDAQ could bounce because it's following along the patterns. And this long upwards pattern is still intact. If you just extend this long blue line, you'll see it matches up right with the bottom edge here. You know, we can we can take this off and and we can we you know, we can draw a new one here. You know, we can go we can go back as far as you want. OK, so you just kind of connect some of the bottoms and there you go. It's still within the long, long-term channel there. All right, so you're looking for higher probability setups. The market's still going up. You know, maybe you wait for it to come down a little more to see if it bounces. If it bounces, then you get in. You may never get the bottom, but you'll get it on a nice move up. All right, so the market is the market to me looks good for the long haul. That's just how it works. You know, you're, you're going to get caught... You're going to have fits and starts. It's going to go up. It's going to go down. But you have to be willing to to see through it. You have to be willing to to get through those times. If you're playing very short-term trading, you better be super good at picking direction in the short term. You better know you better know where the stock is going in that one week time frame, and that's very hard to do. Um, so just be careful if you're playing short term. So the Nasdaq still going up, going through fits and starts. Are we, are we are we gonna have a bear market? Because there's always bears out there. There's always people saying that we've hit the top, we can't go any higher. And, and why do they say that? Because they're probably not in the market and they're just wishing the market will come down so they can get in, or they're just they're just you know they don't know any better. Okay, so they could have said, you know, oh, he, you know, he, we're never going up again. And after the pandemic, they said, we're never going higher than this. And they've tried to sell here and they try to sell here and they try to sell here. But yet the market keeps going up on them. So the bears have been losing pretty badly. All right. So, you know, the broader market, the NASDAQ, the S&P 500, even the Dow, we can look at the, the diamonds DIA. That's the that's the exchange traded fund for the Dow Jones. Dow Jones going up as well has has a nice movement up higher. And the market, the overall market is going to keep going up as well. So we look for the pullbacks and we, we, we get into trades. Now, we, we did sell a uh, put credit spread on the QQQ this week. Can't tell you the, the exact 
uh, specs of the trade because that would be unfair to my paying members. But, you know, we're using the pullback as, a, as an entry, as a bullish entry. And we're hoping that the market will go up, which will make our trade work out. And these are higher probability setups that we're looking for. All right, so let's take a look at some individual stocks because that's what we do as well. We trade individual stocks too. And um, we always tend to look at some of the same stocks because these are the, the stocks that we trade. And, and I pull up some other stocks just to show you some patterns. So let's look at Apple first. Now you can see that I have tons of things on here. I've got channels and triangles and W patterns, channels. So where 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 is Apple looking? Well, Apple has... Had, had just hit all-time highs again right around the beginning of January along with everything else, had the pullback, and now it's sort of trying to find its footing here. Is there a pattern that I can see? You know, you always want to try to look for patterns. What I can see here is, you know, maybe we've got some support right around here. You know, support comes when, when a stock makes a number of moves to a certain area where it can't get through, whether that's trying to get up through resistance or trying to drop through support. Okay, so around the one, I don't know, 168 level seems to be a bottom for now. Um, you know, is there any other pattern I can see? You know, Apple is still on this, you know, nice little, nice little uptrend here. Okay, and you know, maybe we have a little resistance up here. So it's forming this ascending type of triangle here within, within a sort of a, a sideways pattern. It still has the momentum, so maybe it's going to bounce off of this this trend line that I just drew, and maybe it'll start to go up, and maybe it'll try to get through this resistance line right around 182, 183, right up here. So you can see Apple's probably going to move along this bottom leg of the of the trend line and try to get up through this resistance. Or if we have really bad time in the market, then it's going to drop down through the support. And try to, and trade somewhere in between the 50-day and 200-day moving average. So those are the scenarios. You know, these are the, these are the things I look for. Try to gauge which way the market or stock might go. So to me, if the market is strong next week, Apple's going to move along this this bottom leg here. All right. So people say, you know, when do I get in? How do I know what's a good price for a stock? Well, for me, you know, all those fundamentals I talked about are reflected in the price chart. So it's all about trying to find the higher probability setups where the stock may go next. And when if you want to get long a stock, then you wait for that that point where you think it's going to bounce. That's that's how you do it. All right, so that's Apple. Let's look at Tesla. We look at Tesla every week. Tesla is just still a crazy stock. I talk about it all the time. It's very hard to chart. Sometimes it's very hard to, to draw up a chart on Tesla because it's very erratic. It's very volatile. Um, <clears throat> for right now, maybe it's in this little downtrending channel but it popped above it popped back down popped above it again so this channel you know maybe it's not the the greatest thing to look at it, it's hard to sometimes gauge where tesla might go uh you know we may have the support right around 900 could be could be a good support right there i'll draw the line make it long so we get some time here uh if, if tesla does come back down this week or next week it would probably find some support right around 900 and we'll see. Um, so the, the moving average, the 200 day moving average is sloping up the RSI's right smack in the middle, stochastics, right smack in the middle. So, uh, you know, Tesla's not overbought, not oversold right here. It's just probably going to move along, maybe along with the downtrending chart or maybe, I mean the downtrending line, or maybe it'll just start to go up again. It, for me, it's very hard to gauge, you know, where Tesla wants to go, go next, you know, your, the, the, the technical tools I use, it, it's sometimes it's hard to apply to Tesla. That's just, that's just the kind of stock it is. All right. So that's Tesla. Let's look at some others. Let's look at Disney. We've, we've looked at Disney before, like Disney down here, bought some off the bottom. The R side got real oversold. The stochastics started to turn up from there as well. Um, kind of meandering along here, but had a pretty, had a big down day today. Um, so it's been knocked back down. Where's Disney going to go from here? It, it could be anybody's guess. Could be in, could could be starting another downtrend here, maybe a little bit. But we know in the long run, Disney's going to go back up. Going to find a support at some point and find new highs. 
would I get in here? I, I don't see anything that's telling me one way or the other I should get into Disney, either on the long side or short side. I'm not doing anything on Disney because the chart just doesn't look ripe for anything. If anything, Disney might sell off a little bit more. The RSIs turn lower. The stochastics may have a crossover to the downside here. So staying away from Disney for now, nothing there for me. Let's look at Walmart. <clears throat> Walmart is in this 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 uh, longer sideways channel that that I drew here it got the upside got the downside uh, it's right in the middle um, you know some people could say we also have you know you've got a triangle pattern congestion pattern right here what does that mean that means that the ranges are getting tighter and tighter and eventually it's going to blast out either to the upside or to the downside that could be one scenario or the other scenario is it could just you know trade keep bouncing in between the channels here but for now this this congestion triangle pattern walmart will probably blast out to the downside or the upside pretty soon and i'm hoping to the upside because i'm long some walmart for the long term i want to see it go up but it's it, there's no way of telling yet now we do have earnings season starting um next week earnings season is getting underway so in the next month and a half is going to be a lot of earnings. So we're going to see lots of companies moving big in one direction or another. All right. So we got Walmart. Let's look at Clorox because I've been talking about Clorox. I have a position in Clorox and I had mentioned a few weeks ago that, um, here, let me pull back here a little. So I show every week Clorox was in a nice uptrend, was in this nice downtrend. It finally was is trading sideways for a while. I was saying, okay, as soon as it gets, out of this sideways channel and gets above the 200 day moving average, I'm getting in. Okay. And right here, this, this section right here around the middle of December, I bought in around $175, $176 a share. I thought that was going to be the breakout and would just go higher from here. It came back down into the channel, but found the support at the uptrending 20 day moving average. And now Clorox is looking pretty good. Had a good day yesterday, Friday, January 14th. So I'm in I'm in the black here, which is good. I think Clorox should probably keep moving higher from here. Uh, what other stocks do we like to take a look at? Pepsi. Coke and Pepsi we'll look at. Pepsi still looking strong. Just has this nice, beautiful following along the trend lines. I think this is all-time highs for Pepsi. Let me take a look. Yep, all-time highs for Pepsi. Pepsi just has this nice, beautiful, just beautiful, beautiful, just hugging along the 20 day moving average. Uh, Pepsi, I, I think could just keep running higher. Just going to follow along on the, the moving average. But just remember, if you get into a trade, keep an eye on when earnings are. We don't like to have positions over an earnings announcement. So we, we keep that in check. Let's look at Coke, Coca-Cola. I think we just hit, uh, let me, let me double check the monthly chart here. Yep, all-time new highs for Coca-Cola right here. Just today, I think it was. I'm long Coca-Cola shares. Good dividend. All-time new highs the end of yesterday, Friday. So Coke looking strong. Um, I really can't see any reason why it would come off from here. All right. Um, now, you know, I wish I could get a trade going naked put selling, but it just doesn't offer me enough downside cushion when we sell put options, but Coca-Cola, great long-term company for long-term. What other stocks, AMD, we always look at AMD. AMD has been pretty erratic of late. You know, the tech stocks have been getting hit. AMD's part of that. Uh, coming down, get down to this 130 level that I, I drew support line. Uh, I don't remember when I drew it, but obviously we had a big blast through it here. But this was the end of last week, I think, and had that nice reversal, had that big reversal day, uh, which was nice in the market. And so AMD is now back above the support line. Um, you know, it, it may have a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a down trend there that some people would see this as a bearish type of pattern where it, it's going to keep trading in here and then eventually fall through. I don't know yet. I'm keeping an eye on, on AMD. We don't have any trades in AMD at the moment. I'm just waiting to see where it goes. Let me take a look at my, my stocks here and see what else I have on the list. Um, let's see. Oh, Oracle. Let's take a quick look at Oracle. We've had a put sell on Oracle that uh, has, has moved in the right direction for us, 
even though the stocks come down. We got into Oracle right around here. It, it had the it had the nice bounce, and then it pulled all the way back. So we got in right around here somewhere. We saw the put, and and the market and the stocks hasn't really gone much. Hugging along the 200-day moving average here, stochastic kind of hugging along the bottom. Probably going to find support. Hopefully, and move back up. Uh, I like Oracle for the long term. Um, you know, we sold a put on it with a lot of cushion, so that worked for us. Let's look at Cisco. Um, you know, not seeing much there, Cisco. Let me move this over. Let me move the, the title over a little bit. And not seeing much in Cisco. Let's take a look at what else we got here. Whoopsie. Hang on. Sorry about that. Just saw my emails in there. Let's take a look at some other other stocks. Uh, we looked at Disney, Walmart, Tesla. The, the, now the healthcare stocks had taken a little bit beating this week. Not BMY though. Pfizer, Merck. Healthcare looks decent. Kellogg. And let's take a look at Kellogg here. Kellogg's had a nice, it had this nice sort of roundish, roundish bottom and it's starting to move higher. Kellogg and General Mills. I kind of grouped them together, make a lot of cereals. Um, they're both been moving higher, you know, just kind of hugging along their, their 20 day moving averages. Um, what else we have? Mm. Verizon, I talked a lot about as well, had the, had the bullish move finally off the bottom, had a flat bullish flag pattern, did go up, making maybe making another f bullish pennant here, could be possibility. Will Verizon bounce right off the 20 day moving average and move higher from here? I'm watching Verizon next week actually, and, and see if it bounces here and goes higher. If it is, I may, I may start to nibble here and may get us in for a new trade. So that's Verizon. Same thing with AT&T. AT&T had a, actually a bigger move, went from 22 to $27 a share. So they're moving in tandem. Let's take a quick, another look here. What other stocks we have? Uh, the, the, the payment sector, PayPal and Square, I've talked about them as well. PayPal, it's been trading sideways here. I, I don't like this last little move here. It, it's sort of getting through the support line. Um, you know, PayPal could, could have a few more days of downside. I don't like how it kind of fell through that 180 level here. Uh, keep an eye on PayPal. If you're long, you may want to tighten up those stops possibly. Uh, I'm going to give it a few more days. The RSI is still sort of in the middle, but could be, and the stochastics could be starting to turn down. We'll see if it crosses over next week. Square, the other stock in the payment sector, getting beat pretty good. Getting pre beat pretty good. Price action still going down, but the RSI is just kind of hugging along the bottom, not making new lows as the price action makes new lows. That's sort of a bullish divergence. Uh, I'd like to see Square kind of find a bottom here. The stochastics kind of hugging along the bottom also. So maybe the selling is starting to, to dry up uh, in, in Square. But, you know, I'd like to see it trade sideways for a little bit and then, then it should start to move higher. All right. Uh, let me see if there's anything else here. Uh, let's see. What do we got? Twitter. Twitter still kind of... Twitter still going down. I'm not sure Twitter's found a bottom yet. Still going down. Um, but the RSI hasn't made new lows either. And the stochastic's still kind of going up. So maybe Twitter's getting close to a bottom there as well. Uh, let's see what else. Anything else that strikes our fancy? Facebook just going along. Uh, Chewy. Chewy's kind of stuck in a downtrend here. Still in this downtrending channel for Chewy. I think Chewy might have a little bit more to go on the downside. Uh, Bitcoin stocks, Marathon, Mara. These are, you know, if Bitcoin doesn't get going, these are going to drop a little too. Riot and Mara. Riot kind of falling through the, the support that I drew there. All right. I think that's about it. We looked at Coke. We looked at Clorox. eBay. Anything happening in eBay? eBay. Mm. If anything, might have a little more to the downside. All right, so you know that's it. That's it for the for the synopsis here. You know these are just things that I'm seeing. You know get 
Get good with your technical analysis. Start looking at charts, start looking at support and resistance, start seeing where the moving averages are, and it'll help you with your timing. It'll help you time your trades. It's just another tool to have in your toolbox mm -hmm. if you understand how to do technical analysis. All right, so that's it for, for that. I, I hope this has been helpful to you. Let's quickly go to our website, smartoptionsell.com. Um, you know we talk about put selling a lot here, so go to our website, Click on the Put Selling Basics, our website, smartoptionsseller.com. Click on Put Selling Basics. We got a free copy for you. Put your name, email address here. I'll send you a free copy. Uh, what else we have here? Our services tab. We have our two newsletters and our one-on-one -on -one coaching if you need some help getting to the next level. All right, so that's it. That's all for this YouTube video. Leave me a comment if you would. Don't forget to subscribe. If you'd like, hit that red subscribe button in the bottom right-hand corner. And leave me a message. Send me a message. Email me. I love hearing from you, and I will always try to answer you back. All right, that's all for me today. Hope everyone has a good weekend and a great trading week ahead. And I hope to see you back here next Saturday. All right, this is Lee Lowell signing off.